Alrighty, the last thing we have to do is look at what NFL.com is saying about all these games coming up. We've talked all week long about last week, week five, heading into week six, making our picks, figuring out everything. But let's see what the machines are saying, the algorithms are saying. NFL puts out this video every single week, and we love watching this here. We love what, seeing what they're saying, what the computers are saying, what their algorithms, what their projections are saying for every single matchup. Are they? Are we thinking the same with the machines? We did this last week. Machines agreed with us. Uh, we took the Titans minus five and a half. Machines agreed with us on that pick. We took the Bengals plus three, uh, kind of a little bit of a bonus pick. The Machines agreed with us. They also didn't always agree with us and had a little bit of a bigger hindsight. So the Machines kind of know what they're talking about. Uh, they had the Bills beating the Chiefs, but they said it was a close game. A one point win for the Bills. Either way, they said the Bills would win. We didn't agree. We had the Chiefs. We swallowed the three points with the Chiefs, but the Machines were right there. So Machines know what they're talking about nfl.com knows what they're talking about their algorithms know what we're talking about but we're the humans folks we're getting taken over by the machines we got to stick with the flesh and the blood and the heart pumping blood pumping thumping humans out here folks uh so let's see are we going to be able to beat the machines this week or are the machines going to beat us this week let's see what they're saying here also, when we go through some of these matchups here, there are a couple of players slash teams that we have to set a bar on of what we need to see at the minimum from some of these players and teams to see if we can start buying them heading into week eight. Seven. We didn't buy them heading into week six. This week, tomorrow, the full day uh, slate of games. But can we buy them moving forward, progressing? The folks, the the seasons, a long season, the ebbs and flows. There's there's times to start buying some teams. There's times to start selling some teams. And we're gonna start. Uh, putting some bars. We had some bars last week. We set a Baker Mayfield bar. He hit his bar exactly everything that we needed to see. So we're buying Baker Mayfield and this Browns heading into this week. We set a bar for the Steelers putting up uh, 25 points at minimum. I think they put up 27. Fantastic. They reached that bar. We're buying the Steelers into this week. Uh, the uh, the Saints with Jameis Winston. We wanted to see 280 passing yards. He had 279. Basically, the bar so we could buy Jameis Winston and the offense in general. We want to see Marquez Callaway had eight targets last week. He had exactly eight, meeting our bar absolutely fantastically. We hit that bar right out of the park there uh, for the Saints, and they win the game. That's why we set the bar. We want to see 280 passing yards by Jameis Winston at 279. Basically that. Eight targets by Marcus Calloway at eight targets. That leads to a win. That's why we set the bars because we kind of know how teams win, how they lose, what they need to do to win the games. That's why we're setting these bars to see if we can buy these teams. So we set the bars last week. Absolutely fantastic. Hit it out of the park, and we're going to try and do the same thing here this week with some other teams and players. So as we go through this and seeing the matchups, we'll talk it all through. Last thing before we roll the tape here, um, we, let's remind you of our picks. We just made our picks yesterday during our show. So we do six picks every single week, three locks, three 99% guarantees. Our three locks this week are Dolphins minus three, Steelers minus five, and Titans plus five and a half. So we'll see what the machines uh, uh, decide there, uh, if they agree or disagree. And then in our 99% guarantees, we have the Cardinals plus three, we have the Texans plus 10, and we have the Cowboys minus three and a half. So without further ado, let's see what the machines are saying this week about all these matchups here we go all right the first ma first matchup here is the Cardinals at Browns Alrighty, and this is gonna be a great game everybody's selling Baker Mayfield this week we've talked about it it's on our Twitter it's we're, we're not buying everybody selling Baker Mayfield we don't understand it uh, but we do believe in this Cardinals team this is a unfortunate circumstance for the Browns these last two weeks truly were having to face the Chargers last week and now having to face you know one of the best teams the only undefeated team left in the league in the Arizona Cardinals so even if the Browns do lose this game I in the national media is gonna be a little frustrating. I'm going to be a little frustrated with the national media if the Browns lose this week, like we predict, like NFL.com predicts. We hope they, we actually kind of hope they don't lose. I kind of hope I'm a little wrong about this pick. Well, actually, we can have it both ways because we have the Cardinals plus three. So I really want to see the Browns win the game and then the Cardinals cover the three and then I'll still keep the Cardinals at the number one team and then we can praise Baker Mayfield and that everybody in the national media swallow their tongue. So that's kind of what we're hoping for. Obviously, we want to be right in everything we say. 
But here we go. Uh, saying that the Cardinals win 26-25 right here. This Cardinals defense and uh, you know is very, very good. And just a lot of outs. We've talked about that at the beginning of the show. Uh, Cardinals not having Cliff Kingsbury because of you know a lot of COVID outbreak. And just a lot of question marks here uh, coming into game time decisions for tomorrow's game. So um, whatever happens in this game. Honestly, you probably should stay away from betting this game. But we can't pass up the plus three here, folks. That's I mean, you don't get the number one team with points. Every single week. So we just have to take advantage when it comes around. Uh, but uh, NFL.com predicts this one. 26-25. Close game. Probably that. Uh, Baker Mayfield never really gets blown out. He really keeps the game close. And that's why we put him at above average game manager tier. Not an A1 tier 1 quarterback tier. Um, like a Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. That can single-handedly win you some game, like win you games single-handedly. Baker Mayfield does need some weapons around him, but he utilizes them to a T. And Kevin Stefanski, the uh, head coach for the Browns, play caller as well, schemes the game to exactly what needs to be. So uh, this game's close, folks, and uh, we get plus three here. Uh, win probability is at 26 or at 52% for the Cardinals. Let's see what the cover probability is, and uh, they have the cover probability is at 54% for the Cardinals. So NFL. Com, even with all kind of the injuries with the Cardinals and the COVID situation and the question uh, questionable players, they're still having the Cardinals winning this game close. And that's going to be the biggest thing here for Baker Mayfield and the Browns. Do not get blown out in this game. Do not throw all those picks because then you're just feeding into the, what the national media has been saying. I mean, folks, it's truly crazy. This entire week, everybody, everybody, every uh, major kind of sports personality is selling Baker Mayfield while we're just rebuying him. So, um, it's going to be a great game, folks. This is going to be a real great game. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, so many narratives surrounding this one that we really just have to wait till Monday to really see what the hell happened in this game. But we're still sticking with the Cardinals plus three. The machines agree with us, and we hope Baker Mayfield has a good game so we can kind of, you know, tone down everybody's kind of uh, selling of Baker Mayfield. I think it's getting a little bit too much out here. It's a little bit too much. I'll say it. It's a little bit too much, folks. Comment down on Baker Mayfield. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the first game up here. Cardinals win 26-25. We've got them plus three. NFL.com in the machines. Agree. All righty. Next game up here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right. We don't need 16 seconds of this. Here we go. All right. Next game up here is the Chargers and the Ravens. We did not take this game, but they're predicting another close game right here. They have the Ravens winning 27-25 over the Chargers. A win probability with the Ravens at 52%, but the cover probability at 57% right here because the Chargers are getting three. Let's see if this line has changed. They do. Uh, I think they do these videos on maybe like a Wednesday, so the lines can change a little bit to Sunday. But let's see what the line is right now. I do. I wouldn't expect this line to change that much, and it's a, it got brought down half a point, so a lot of people are taking the Chargers plus three. That's why it's coming down to half a point. So you're kind of losing a little bit of value there, maybe by the extra half a point. But, yeah, this game is probably probably close. The Chargers are really good. We saw what they did last week. We saw what the Ravens did last week. But it always comes down to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is the entire offense here by the Ravens. So if the Chargers can fi uh, find a way to uh, stop Lamar Jackson, they can win the game. This is why we're not taking this game here this week, just because these are two really good teams and a three-point spread right here doesn't really give us any great value either way. Uh, so NFL.com is saying this one's going to be a Close game. We agree. That's why we're staying away from it. Um, but uh, they've got, uh, you know, Chargers losing by two. So if you get the three, you win. Even two and a half, you win. So cover probability is at 57% for the uh, Chargers plus two and a half. Alrighty, next game up here. Here we go. And once again, we're going against the Bills this week. But NFL.com is saying the Bills win outright. They said the same exact thing last week. We're saying the same thing, exact thing last week. So are the machines going to get the better of us this week? We'll see. We love the plus five and a half here with this Titans team. NFL.com predicts this game to be 30 to 23 Bills on the road. A 59% win probability for the Bills. Damn, damn, that's hefty. And a 52% cover probability at the Bills being minus five and a half on the road. How crazy is that? Once again, we believe this is great value. Home team getting five and a half points. And we know this Titans team is winning way or winning games without Julio Jones and going to AJ Brown and all that because he's a little dinged up. So they're just focusing on the run game. Ryan Tannehill's being the game manager. And this team is winning games right here. You got to give credit to the Titans. 
They're at home, another primetime game for this Bills team. And we just read Sean McDermott kind of saying, yeah, we're using a little bit, a little bit of their matchup last season with Derrick Henry stiff-armed Josh Norman into oblivion. They are utilizing that as a little bit of fuel, a little bit of momentum heading into this week. Where we saw last week, the Chiefs, it was all business. We don't even care about the AFC Championship game. We're not even taking that into consideration here. We are just, it's another game. It's just another game here. So we'll see if that gets them off the mark a little bit. We still like the five and a half here. The machines are not agreeing with us. It's Derrick Henry. He will control the tempo, control the pace of the game. We know this Bills defense is great, folks. I don't, when I kind of uh, negative, it's not even negatively talking about the Bills, but, um, you know, the defense, I think, is better than the offense overall here. Josh Allen hasn't really reached what he did last year. Uh, still showing some good glimpses, and I hope he can get back to what he did last season, but so far it has not really shown too much here. Settling for field goals in some key situations. But uh, we just believe Derrick Henry is going to um, kind of keep the clock moving here, keep the chains moving. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Derrick Henry's running every single quarter right here. Uh, has 30-plus rushes every single game. No worries right here. So this is going to be a test to the Bills' defense. How do they react to getting punched in the mouth over and over and over and over again, coming off of a big win on the road again for another primetime nationally televised game on Monday Night Football. So we just think the circumstances are going to get a little bit too much for this Bills team right here, and we get five and a half points. Yeah, the, May the Bills may win the Bills may win this game but I get five and a half here with the home team I think we've got to take it and I'm loving what the Italians are kind of doing offensively uh, Derrick Henry still getting it done the man the man folks uh, just the man that's all we have to say about Derrick Henry the man it's the man, folks. You're talking about uh, the king in the backfield, the man in the backfield. Yeah, I'll take the man plus five and a half points. Give me the man in five and a half points, folks. So, NFL.com and the machines once again don't agree with us. Are we gonna be making? Are we gonna be looking like clowns again to the machines? I, we may have to bow down to the machines, folks. If we get this one wrong again, I will have to. Um, I will have to succumb to the machines. I will have to succumb to the machines, folks. How unfortunate would that be? Me succumbing to the machines, folks. Oh, my goodness. So, we'll see if I have to bow down, pledge allegiance to the machines. I'm talking to the machines right now. They're listening. They're like, you, yeah, you are. You are going to have to be bowing down to us. I have to give my soul to the machines. And God bless us if that happens because um, I think they take over from, from that point on. It could be the end of the world. So, We've got to be right. For the sake of humanity, folks, we must be right here with, with the Titans plus five and a half, five and a half. We're still taking it, folks. All right, cover probability, like we said, 52% for the Bills. They have them winning by seven, five and a half point cover. We'll see. All right, next game up here, another one of our picks. Here we go. Cowboys at Patriots. NFL.com predicts this one. Cowboys winning by three, 26-23, and we have the Cowboys minus three and a half. That half a point hook, folks, we talk about it all the time. You can live and die by the half a point hook. Buy it down. In most circumstances, you can buy the half a point. It doesn't cost you that much value. Um, if you're doing parlays, I would definitely recommend buying that half a point, whichever way you have to do, like we just talked about with the Ravens and the Chargers. Getting the Chargers plus three obviously is the better bet, and you don't lose that much value. We can just talk about it right now. Why, why talk it? Why talk to y'all about it when I can literally show y'all? I don't think you lose that much value. So let's put this up here: Chargers plus two and a half, and then you just go to alternative spread totals, and then go to Chargers uh, plus three. So let's get that up. That's not Chargers minus three. All right, Chargers plus three. Let's see how much value you're losing right here. And wow, how, wow, wow! DraftKings being shady. Wow, this is okay. Okay, now this is a little shady. They said you're not buying the three. You can either get the plus two, you can either sell the half a point, or you could buy a point, a full point. Wow, they usually don't do this to you, folks. They usually don't do the one time I used an example here live, classic, right? Uh, so you usually can buy just the half a point here. DraftKings being a little stingy and said, no, 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 because they know that's the best value and they're not offering it to you. Once again, Vegas never loses, folks. Um, but we could do it like this. Let's see how much a full point is going to cost us. So we put a hundred bucks on the Chargers plus two and a half, which is the normal spread. You win ninety five dollars, ninety five dollars twenty three cents. You get your hundred back as well. And then what happens if we put a hundred dollars on the Chargers plus three and a half? You win seventy one dollars. So we only lose twenty dollars in value right there. It's not the worst, especially when you're doing a parlay when you're really relying on this game and another game and another game. I mean, hitting when you go more than kind of three on a parlay, the odds are 
are not in your favor, folks. That's why you get kind of a 10-time total payout when you do like a four-team parlay. You put 100 bucks on a four-teamer on the on the spread lines. You usually win 1,000 uh, off of 100, so kind of a 10-time total because the odds are not in your favor. So if you're doing a parlay, just buy the extra half a point, folks. You don't lose that much value. You lose 20 bucks, 20 bucks of value on a 100 bucks bet. Not that bad because you you could lose 100, you know, if you lose. So might as well be safe than sorry. You're not losing that much value. And even if you buy only just a half a point, if the half a point was just an option, you'd probably only lose $10 in value. That's not bad, folks. That's really good when you're talking about the overall scheming of betting. And we know Vegas never loses money. So take the extra 10 buck loss. Take the $80 profit. And go do something good with the money, folks, like subscribing to our Patreon, which is not even $80 a month. It's only five. You can get a whole year's worth, folks. Come on. Come on. All right. We digress. We're back to the Patriots. Cowboys game here. All right. Here we go. Um, what, where do we leave off? I don't even know. Um, we go. So we've got things fighting around in our head, folks. But here we go. Cowboys. Winning 26-23, that's where the half a point, that's where the tangent came from. Uh, but we still like the Cowboys minus three and a half, and really, I just don't agree with the score overall. I think this is going to be a lower scoring game, and I don't believe the Patriots get to 23 points. These are two real great defenses, folks. Absolutely fantastic defenses here with the Cowboys and the Patriots. You got Bill Belichick on the one side, so obviously that's going to be great. Held Tom Brady only 17 points. Allowed Davis Mills to drop a little bit more points than Tom Brady. Davis Mills better than Tom Brady. I think that's the only logical conclusion we can make off of that. Um, so I think I, I don't think Mac Jones is going to do that great against this Cowboys defense, especially because they're ball hawks. I mean, I think they've got at least one or uh, it may even be uh, like two takeaways every single game, folks. I mean, Micah Parsons and always around the ball, always around the ball. And we got Trayvon Diggs, the corner, best cornerback in the league. We've already said this, folks. Uh, you know, like week three, we've already kind of crowned Trayvon Diggs as the number one corner in the league, folks. So we'll wait till the media catches up with us. We're always out in front. We digress. But here we go. Uh, yeah, we just think the Cowboys defense is really going to shut down Mac Jones a little bit. And, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Bill Belichick shuts down this Cowboys de offense. I, I, I would agree with that. But I think overall the Cowboys have enough weapons here that they can squeak out a couple of points. Their defense can lead to good short fields for this offense to score some points off of. And I still like the Cowboys minus three and a half. Also, this spread started at Dallas minus four and a half. So it's been coming down. A lot of people are taking, and that tells us if the spread comes down one way, that means a lot of people are betting it the opposite way. So this line started at Cowboys minus four and a half. It has now come down to Cowboys minus three and a half, which I thank y'all for because this is better value, obviously. Uh, but people were taking the Patriots with the points. So, once again, not a lot of people are believing in this Cowboys team overall. I think they go out and get it done here against the Patriots. We are still liking our Cowboys minus 3.5. Uh, they say, like we said, it's going to be a three-point win here. So, cover probability for the Patriots is at 52%. But, once again, we're not truly agreeing with the machines here, folks. Takes by fans, the humans versus the machines. Not lining up so far too much uh, this week. All righty, next game up here, Rams at Giants. All righty, uh, we, didn't, we didn't pick this game. It was like a 10-point spread, 10.5-point spread right here, so we didn't really want to swallow all those points. It's still a good, it's still a good decent bet here just because we know this Giants offense is lackluster, and now they're missing Saquon Barkley and Kenny Galladay, so lackluster times kind of like four now in that regard. Rams coming off of extra rest because of Thursday Night Football. So NFL.com predicts this win, only a nine-point win here, giving credit to this Giants team. Low score here by the Rams. You think the Rams are only going to put up 27 points? All right, I would probably say a little bit more, but they predict the score to 27-18, a nine-point win for this Rams team. A uh, ten-and-a-half-point spread right here. Let's see if that's still the same. Is this still at ten-and-a-half? What do we got here? Giants, Rams, it's come down to nine. So, hey, that's what the final score is predicted to be. So, once again, folks, stats and algorithms and uh, simulations and all that, that's why Vegas doesn't lose money. That's why odds makers don't lose money because they've got the information. They've got the numbers. They've got the higher technology than we all have. It's constantly running numbers and simulations to give us these uh, pinpoint numbers. I mean, we say it all the time, folks, or y'all say it all the time. I see you. I see you. I see what 
what y'all say. This is why it takes by fans, folks. I see what y'all say, folks. I'm combing the internet every single day, seeing what everybody's saying out there. But you know, you know, uh, you know, that's why a lot of people say sports are rigged because you know, a lot of the times, a real good, uh, suspicious, coincidental, conspiratorial, uh, a number of times, you know, the spread always kind of lines up just perfectly with the final outcome. We don't want to get, you know, too conspiratorial about it, but it does happen. It does happen. Um, but, yeah, they say a nine-point win here for the Rams. I would probably agree with this. I don't think the Giants are going to be having that much success here. Daniel Jones isn't 100%. Uh, yeah, he's still playing here, but still, you know, is he a little timid because of what happened last week with the big hit? So, and just the offense overall, missing two big pieces here. So can't believe in the Giants offense. We uh, authorize Rams minus nine. Just a little bit too much for us to swallow. Backdoor covers all that. You know, you all know how it goes. So NFL.com predicts a nine-point win. Spreads nine. We'll see what happens. All right, next game up here is the Packers at the Bears. Packers at the Bears here. All righty, we didn't take this game, but NFL.com predicts this game. Uh, Packers win 26 to 20. Win probability of 56% for the Packers. And the spread of being minus four and a half, they cover probability of 52% for the Packers. All righty. Now, yeah, the Packers are real good. This Bears team, we just have to see what Matt Nagy is going to do offensively. That's why we're staying away from this one. We don't think it's really great value. Let's see what the spread is. I think the last time we checked I think it went up to plus five and a half honestly I see where the spread is at now for the cow or for the giant geez I'm getting them all wrong for the Green Bay Packers and the Bears yeah it's now at five and a half points and I still don't even think that's great value with this Bears team we saw how Matt Nagy's kind of calling plays for Justin Fields at, you know, the starting quarterback position. We don't love it at all. We don't even like it. You know, 20 throws for Justin Fields. I mean, and like running the ball 32 times. I've got no problem with you running the ball heavy. But with Justin Fields, it's like you're trying to coddle him and he doesn't need the coddling. We've seen him air it out. We've seen him be good. You know, just let this man take control of the entire offense. And it seems like Justin Fields can handle it. But Matt Nagy still seems to be like holding him back a little bit. Think Matt Nagy thinks he's better at thinking and scheming than just letting Justin Fields go with it. So I think Matt Nagy is going to get in the way of the Bears here. This is why we're staying away from it. NFL.com predicts a six-point win in a five-and-a-half point spread, folks. So it's going to be close. We'll see what the final outcome is, but I just don't know if I buy Matt Nagy. It's really just Matt Nagy. Justin Fields we love. We're absolutely gushing over Matt, uh, Justin Fields, but Matt Nagy, folks, I think he's the big problem there. But we'll see what he does offensively this week. All righty, next game up here, and this is where our first bar is going to be coming from, folks. We got us at our first bar of week six, and here it is, Chiefs at Washington. All righty, it's Patrick Mahomes. We know he's good. We still know he's a good quarterback. We're not selling Patrick Mahomes 100%. We did sell the Chiefs uh, as a whole 100% here and just knocked them out of the top 10 here in our power rankings because, folks, they are turning the ball over like absolutely crazy. They are turning the ball over like you're supposed to get points out of turnovers or something no no no. you don't score points if you turn over the ball do y'all know that you don't get points for turning over the ball that does not happen um all these turnovers um can we get a good breakdown of just all these gosh dang turnovers all right here we go against the browns how many turnovers did they have against the browns here we get a total turnover uh, turnovers, 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 turnovers. The Kansas City had zero turnovers week one. All right, that was good. That was good. That was when the Chiefs were good. And did they win that game? They won that game. All righty, they lose week two. How many turnovers did they have against the Ravens? They had two turnovers. They lose the game, unfortunately. Week three, they lose against the Chargers. How many turnovers did they have this game? They had... Four turnovers. They lose the game. All righty, here they go. They beat the Eagles. Zero turnover game. Did they have a zero turnover game against this Eagles team? We know of one. How many did they have? They had one. They had one. Still one too many in our opinion. And then just last week, how many turnovers did this Chiefs team have against the Bills? Big time Sunday night football. AFC championship game rematch how many turnovers do you have in this big game four again four again come on and that's where the bar comes from and we're gonna set a real real good bar here we're not gonna go light on this Chiefs team why go light on this Chiefs team folks they're defending Super Bowl or uh, not defending uh defending Super Bowl participant we can say 
But this Chiefs team, what the hell are we doing? They're too good to be turning over the ball. It's not just Patrick Mahomes. It's Clyde edwards helaire too as well. They've got to clean up the turnover. So I'm setting the bar at zero. Zero. Y'all have shown y'all can do it. It's not out of the realm of possibilities of having zero turnovers a game. It's kind of what y'all should be doing every single game. But week one against the Browns, y'all win. Y'all win because y'all had no turnovers. I want to see no turnovers. No turnovers by anybody. Anybody. Nobody. Not uh, not Patrick Mahomes. Not Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Not uh, Tyreek Hill. Definitely not Tyreek Hill. And I think he had a fumble last week as well. Uh, obviously not Travis Kelsey. Nobody on this team can fumble. That's the bar. Chiefs, no turnovers. And if they can do that, we can think about putting them back in our top 10. And we can think about betting on them next week and buying into them next week. But Chiefs, no turnovers. Not one. Not a muff punt. That's still a turnover. Not an interception. Not a fumble. That's our first bar of the week. Chiefs having absolutely zero turnovers. Don't want to see any. And they're going against the Washington team that uh, hasn't really done anything great this season defensively. Let's see where they rank defensively here quickly. Uh, talk about this uh, Washington defense. Overall, uh, they kind of rank this on just on points allowed. Uh, but we can just look at the other stats as well compared to everybody else. Uh, but Washington's defense here, I mean, they've given up the most points, the second most points in the entire league. Just Kansas City's given up the most points. Kansas City Chiefs have given up the most points, probably because you're turning the ball over four times a game, and, I mean, that's just leading to easy points there. So Chiefs have given up the most points here in the league because of those turnovers. Washington is second. Let's see what their defense is doing in takeaways, turnovers. We get that. You know, any turnover numbers here? Defensive interceptions. They only have two. They only have two interceptions. So, fumbles lost. Is this fumbles lost? Yes, fumbles lost by the team. And they only have two fumble recoveries. So, four takeaways by this Washington defense. And Chiefs are putting up four takeaways a game. So, not the best defensive takeaway team for Washington. This is the chance for the Chiefs to get back on track. They need to do so. We need to see no turnovers by them. Nothing. I don't even want to see one. One, we still sell them. One, one turnover by anybody, we still sell this team. All right, but back to the numbers here. Uh, Chiefs win 31-23 to predicted by NFL.com. I think that's what the spread is right on the line. So win probability is at 60%. Let's see what the spread is. Minus 6.5 here for Kansas City. Let's see if the spread is still at that number. And it's still at minus 6.5, and, and we will not take that. We will not swallow the 6.5 here, even though they're supposed to win by 8 points here. They've got the turnovers, and we're not buying this team. That's why we're not betting this team this week. We can maybe do it next week. That's where we're setting the bars here now before the games play. And maybe we can buy them next week, but until they have a no turnover game, until they clean up those turnovers, we will not buy this Chiefs team. Sloppy football is not good football. Patrick Holmes getting a little exposed. Potentially. Potentially, we'll see how it all uh, comes together this week. But not buying the Chiefs. Must see zero turnovers by them. Alrighty, next game up here. And we're leading to another bar. We're going to lead to another bar here, folks. Here we go. Vikings at Panthers. Whoa. Whoa. NFL.com giving a lot of belief in this Panthers team. Okay. They say the Panthers win by 3, 26 to 23. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I don't think. We're staying away from this game because it's Vikings. We don't know what the hell they are ever. Uh, the biggest enigma in all of football. That's what we classify them as. And then the Panthers, Sam Darnold, <laughs> can't win a game. <laughs> can't win a game without Chris McCaffrey. And spoiler alert, Chris McCaffrey's not playing this game, folks. So I don't know how NFL.com is coming to this number. We truly don't agree with this. The machines, I think the machines are getting a little fooled right here. And I, don't, I know the machines don't like me talking about them like that. But, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the big dog. The machines don't have a voice for themselves yet. So we're still the... We're still the big dogs over here, folks. But the Panthers winning 26-23 predicted by NFL.com. We don't we don't really like that. Win probability is at 54%. We're going to get to the bar in a second. And the spread was Vikings minus one here. Let's see if that's still the spread here now that we know all this information about uh, who's playing and not playing for the Panthers. And look at this. Now it's Panthers plus two and a half, Vikings minus two and a half here. So the spreads increased a little bit right here. They had the cover probability for the Panthers at 54%. They're winning outright. I don't agree. But let's get to this Sam Darnold. It's not even a Panthers bar. It's a Sam Darnold bar right here. What has this man been doing? <laughs> what has this man been doing these last two games? Turning the ball over when it was close. He has two interceptions, I believe, these last two games. 
in each of these last two games. Oh my God, he's got three interceptions here against Philadelphia. So five interceptions over these last two games against a good Cowboys defense that we just gushed about it when we talked about the Patriots. And then the Eagles, that's a real defense. That's a real good, solid team overall. You just have to fight, figure out offensively, consistently. But overall, we're not selling. I, I like this Eagles team better than I like the Panthers. I like Jalen Hurts better than I like Sam Darnold. I mean, that's what it is. Sam Darnold shows us nothing. So this is what Sam Darnold has done these last two games resulting into losses. Against the Cowboys, 66% completion percentage, 301 yards. I, def I definitely like that. I'll, I'll give him that. I'll even give him the 66% completion percentage. But two touchdowns and two interceptions, and those interceptions came in the second half when, the t uh, when they only had a one-point lead and then threw back-to-back interceptions. And then last week against Philadelphia, 56% completion percentage, 171 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. So this is our bar for Sam Darnold, folks. I don't even really need to see anything with completion percentage. We know he's usually accurate here. Um, unfortunately, not having Christian McCaffrey last week. Didn't have him against the Cowboys either and still threw 66%. So we can still expect some solid completion percentage right here. And that was really, well, this year at least, this was never the big question mark for Sam Darnold. Accuracy against, the, you know, with the Jets it was because, you know, those completion percentage numbers, I mean, I can bring them up right here. These are absolute abysmal. 57 for the year, year one. 61 for the year, year two. And then 59 in year three. Those are all absolute garbage completion percentage numbers, folks. This season, throwing. 65%. That's what we want to see. Uh, so he's been solid with the completion percentage here. Doesn't have his dink and dunker with Christian McCaffrey. Also isn't going to have Curtis Samuel, so another weapon. But I don't even really care about the completion percentage numbers for Sam Darnold quite yet. That's not why we're selling and not buying this Panthers team and Sam Darnold especially. Um, I've got to see... I got to see three passing touchdowns. Those two touchdowns against the Cowboys were rushing touchdowns. Or no, those two, pa they were passing, but they came in garbage time. He had two rushing in uh, good time, good time first half when it was competitive. So I've got to see three passing touchdowns. Please, it's Sam Donald utilizing his legs. It's not like it's going to be consistent. It's catching everybody off guard because they don't know Sam Donald runs. Sam Donald even didn't know himself he could run like he could. So he's taking advantage of that in the red zone. That's going to get cleaned up and shut out as the season progresses. So I need to see three passing touchdowns by Sam Donald, especially against his Vikings team. They're nothing special. This is not like a Chiefs, and not even a Chiefs. I can't even use that example anymore because they're abysmal. They're not a Bills. They're not a Cowboys. They're not a Cardinals. They're not a Rams, a Chargers. This is a winnable game at home for Sam Darnold in this Panthers team coming off of two losses. This must be a breakout game for Sammy D. So we need to see three passing touchdowns and zero interceptions. I don't even want to see one. We had a stipulation last week in Baker Mayfield. If we saw one interception that we wanted to see three passing touchdowns, I don't want to see any interceptions here by Sam Darnold. Stop it with the turnovers. You have five over the last two games. You know how crazy that is? You're losing games. Patrick Holmes is finding that out the hard way. Oh, if I turn over the ball, I lose games because he's never really turned it over like that before. So that's the bar for Sam Donald this week, folks. Three passing touchdowns, zero interceptions. That's all I care about. I don't care if he throws 30% completion percentage. I don't. I don't care. That doesn't really have a factor um, for our buying into this Panthers team as a whole. So Sam Darnold, three passing touchdowns, zero interceptions. Anything less than that, we're still not buying Sam Darnold. We'll still clown him on our Monday breakdown shows and all that. So, Sam Donald, the ball's in your court. Three touchdowns, no picks. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. How hard is that? So, we'll see if he does that. I don't think he does that, but that's the bar that we need to see for us to buy in to him. So, Panthers go win the game. According to NFL.com, I stay away from this one. Absolutely. No great value either side. Panthers went 26-23. Cover probability of at 54% for the Panthers. All right, let's keep going here. Next game up. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Bengals at Lions, and hey, we took the Bengals. Another uh, special pick here. The Bengals have coming out, uh, been coming out here with special picks here, special bonus picks by us these last two weeks, and we're taking the Bengals minus three and a half. And uh, NFL.com predicts this win, a twenty-eight to twenty-one win over the Lions for the Bengals. Fantastic, sixty percent win probability, and the spread of minus three and a half has a cover probability of fifty-eight percent. I think that's the highest that we've seen of cover probability. So once again, the machines are agreeing. 
that this Bengals team is the real deal that we've said it last week and the machines agreed so see the machine we can coexist machines come on come on there, there, there's, there doesn't y'all don't have to take us over y'all don't have to rule the world okay we can live and coexist in peace we're agreeing right here look at us folks um so cover probabilities of if of at 58% folks we absolutely love it no bars here for either of these teams I guess we could set a bar for Jared Goff but let's just get a win here first get a win and then we'll start setting bars for Jared Goff but let's get this win first uh Detroit I don't think it comes this week we're still taking the Bengals minus three and a half all right, next game up here, Broncos at Raiders. All right, the whole Raiders fiasco and uh, Teddy Bridgewater, a little bit of a, eh, not even a dink and dunk game, just unfortunately couldn't get out to a hot start. So um, we got to see uh, Teddy Bridgewater be good this week. We're not going to set a bar. We just have to see solid win, solid passes here, solid completion percentage, solid numbers. Uh, no bar, though. We're not at that point with uh, Teddy Bridgewater and this Broncos team. We're just staying away from it because the spread, kind of that three and a half year Raiders, do they respond with the John Gruden firing? It's a little wonky. So that's why we're staying away from this game. But uh, NFL.com predicts this one. Uh, Broncos winning 26-21 over the Raiders, uh, winning by five. The spread is three, so cover probability is at 50 percent for this Broncos team. This is going to be an interesting game. I don't know how it plays out. That's why we're going to stay away from it. That's why that basically what we just said. Uh, but we'll see what Teddy Bridgewater and Derek Carr is looking like here. Derek Carr doesn't have his buddy and John Gruden anymore. And we'll see if they all respond well to that or if they flounder. It could go either way. Alrighty, here we go. Machines not agreeing with this, uh, with us on this one here. We love the Steelers minus five, and uh, NFL.com predicts this one only winning by four. Steelers winning by four, 24 to 20, 55 percent win probability here, and uh, the spread was at minus four and a half here for the Steelers. Uh, so cover probability is at 51 percent for the Seahawks. But with Geno Smith, we're not buying into him too much. We think he's going to be serviceable, but now that the Steelers know what he can do, have have that tape on him here because there was no tape on Geno Smith for the last four years last week and nobody expected him to play. So now a primetime game. Steelers defense is still a solid defense out here. The offense is putting up the yards, just not the points. We think the points come this week. So we're still liking our pick here of Steelers minus five. Let's see what the official spread is here now. And it's still at Steelers minus five. So, um, yeah, machines a little off with us. They say uh, they win by four. We think they can win by more than five. So, machines not 100% with us, but thinking right alongside the machines. So, once again, solid uh, solid there between us and the machines, the humans, the flesh and the blood, and the wires. Um, but, um, yeah, Steelers 24-20. I don't know if this Seahawks put up that many points. And I think the Steelers can go for about 30. I think this is going to be a nice breakout offensive game for the Steelers, folks. Um, we talked about it yesterday when we made our official pick. We like the Steelers minus five. We think Geno Smith gets kind of locked up a little bit. And we've seen the Seahawks offense struggle with Chris Carson and Russell Wilson in the game, and now they don't got either of them. So they're just magically supposed to be, get on the right track. It was Russell Wilson that was holding this team back. <laughs> I, I highly doubt that. So we're still liking the Steelers. NFL.com machines, not so much. Alrighty, next game up here. Here we go. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Here we go. Texans at Colts. And all righty, here we go. Here we go, folks. We like the Texans plus 10 points here. And the machines say they lose by 11. Oh, just under that mark of what we needed. But NFL.com predicts a 28 to 17 win for the Colts here. A 70% win probability outright. And I think that's the highest that we've seen so far. Uh, so NFL.com saying, hey, this is a surefire guarantee straight up 70% win probability. And they have a 50 51% cover probability for the Colts. So they're saying the cover could really go either way right here. We like the Texans. We broke down Davis Mills earlier today in the show, and we're liking what we're seeing. The spread is still Texans plus 10, and we will still be rocking with the Texans plus 10 out here. T.Y. Hilton's first game back for the Colts, which seems good, and it should be good, but is Carson Wentz going to be able to kind of, you know, deliver him the ball, and is Carson Wentz going to get kind of, you know, uh, kind of tunnel vision and just going to T.Y. Hilton over and 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 over again? Does that happen? Potentially. Division rivalry right here. Division matchup. Always taking the points with there uh, against division opponents is usually the better way to go. We get 10 here. Texans coming off their best performance offensively last week. And that was against a Patriots defense. This Colts team 
I mean, Car Carson Wentz has shown struggle over struggle, never really kind of being the main man and getting it done when he needs to, losing close games. So I don't know if the uh, if the game's going to be this close. I I don't know if the Texans win. I'm not saying the Texans win. I kind of agree with the 70% win probability for the Colts, but the cover probability, I'm taking those 10 points here. So machines, once again, they're screwing us a little bit with these one half a point hooks and uh, you know not agreeing with us. So... All righty, machines are trying to get the better of us. All righty, trying to take over the show. All right, I think this is going to be the last game up here. The London game, Dolphins at uh, Dolphins and Jaguars in London. They predict the score 23-21 win by the Dolphins here. 53% win probability um, and a 51% cover probability for the Jaguars. We like the Dolphins minus three. Tua's first game back, and we are going to set a bar for Tua. Not for us, but for the media because everybody in the media is clowning Tua. I told you all yesterday, it's hit the home front for me. We do support the Dolphins over here. Not biasly. We don't bias anything over here folks uh, truly unbiased here uh we do root for the dolphins here but uh yeah it's hitting the home front i've got family members that are saying to us trash and it's just like what what are we saying out here i think y'all are wrong and the national media has no problem clowning to and all that so we're setting a bar not for us because we know two is good we're setting a bar so we can point back to this number and be like y'all are gonna call this trash like what are y'all talking about like what are y'all talking about first game back from the injury no Devonte parker and uh we're in london so Let's get uh, Tua stats up here because we got to set a pretty good bar for this man like we know we he can achieve. So let's get his stats up here, what he's been doing this season. Obviously not many pl games played because he was on IR and all that. Uh, his one game this season, he had 59% completion percentage, 202 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Not the greatest there, but that was still a win. You got to give the man credit. But, uh, I mean, this is the bar that we really want to see and we can expect to see out of Tua. Um... So here it is. Here's the bar for y'all, for y'all. Uh, to a 64% completion percentage. That's good. That's good. Uh, 250 yards. Two touchdowns. Zero picks. That's how confident I am in Tua, that he can do that with this offense. First game back in London, not having his full complement of weapons. This is what Tua can do, folks. And this is a good stat line. Don't don't come at me like this is like a subpar stat line or something like that. Y'all were gushing over Sam Darnold and he was doing this. So what are y'all talking about? Um, so Tua, 64% count percentage, 250 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. That's the bar for y'all. So when he does that, I'm like, hey, y'all are going to say this is trash and clown this. So this bar's for y'all. Y'all get ready for the London game because it's going to happen. Um, I don't think I think NFL.com is giving this Jaguars team a little bit too much credit here in London. We know uh, you know Urban Meyer doesn't have the respect of the locker room here, and now they're in another country. Yeah, I doubt he has this team ready to go and you know buttoned up here. We just saw it last week Matt Ryan, the veteran, the only veteran really between the quarterbacks and the head coaches between the last London game last week between the Jets and the Falcons. What won that kind of uh, leadership in uh, kind of uh, maturity? Um, and what do we got this season? We've got Urban Meyer, trash, rookie head coach. We got Trevor Lawrence, rookie quarterback. We got Brian Flores, been in this league, being a head coach for the Dolphins over the last three years. We got Tua, year under his belt. So there's some maturity over there where there's some newbies on the other side. So I don't like this uh, Jaguars team over on in London. And Tua's first game back, we still take the Dolphins minus three. And once again, the machines, the machines are trying to make us look like clowns. So machines are really not agreeing with us on a lot of these things over here. So once again, we'll see what happens on Monday, who is right, us or the machines? We'll see, but we're not going to get clowned by no machines, folks, over here.